Now, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, made a rare but strong stance on anti-Semitism in Parliament today. And it was in response to the outrageous anti-Semitic comments made by the New South Wales Greens MP, Jenny Long. I condemn totally any form of anti-Semitism, including, including the comments by my uh, local member, the member for Newtown, whose comments about uh, tentacles with regard to the Jewish community I find offensive. I find it had its origins in anti-Semitism, and I condemn it unequivocally. Joining me now, commentators Jason Morrison and Sky News host Anika DiGiorgio. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Jason, Jenny Leong's comments were so outrageous. Any yeah. other politician would have been sacked for them. She said that Jews have their tentacles in every industry. It took that for the Prime Minister to get up and say that anti-Semitism wasn't on. And, and those watching closely that clip also noticed they're putting on the animated head shaking and tut-tutting was uh, Tony Burke, who's also been pretty close, uh, slow to the front line on this one too. Um, he had nowhere to go. The Prime Minister had nowhere to go but to condemn because it's so abhorrent, as she said. Um, people won't forgive his, his slowness to the front of this, um, particularly Jews in Australia. They won't forgive it, and nor should they, because the Prime Minister had an obligation to ensure peace and harmony in Australia, and he let us down at a time when he could have actually really taken a stand. Look, we've also seen, Danika, the news overnight that mm. Israel has rightly rejected a deal by Hamas. Mm. You know, again, Israel's always under this pressure to come to some sort of ceasefire deal. While there are still hostages in Gaza, we learn that some 31, maybe even more of them, yes. have been killed. Mm -hmm. Why is this pressure always on Israel? Well, that's a really good question. Why is this pressure on Israel? But credit where credit's due to Benjamin Netanyahu. He's saying no to all these foreign powers who are really pressing for him. The US, they're constantly saying, let's try and minimise the situation. Why on earth would Benjamin Netanyahu want to be listening to the United States? I mean, seriously, in the end, Hamas was the one that started this war. They started this war when they slaughtered more than 1,000 Jews on October 7. They're the enemy here. And if Hamas is now coming out saying, well, let's have a truce, we're going to release some hostages, as you said, we don't know how many of those hostages are still alive. The mm. Israeli Times are reporting that one-fifth have died. And in the end, a truce deal with uh, Hamas basically means you're giving up Gaza and then that the problems just continue. It's a revolving cycle. So, no, Israel has a right to defend itself and a right to do what it's doing. Yeah, and, and good to hear Benjamin Netanyahu say that they will stay the course until mm. victory. However long that takes, won't be weeks, he indicated probably months. Look, big news, of course, this week with uh, King Charles, uh, his cancer diagnosis in the UK. Prince Harry's reported Jason to have already gone back to the US. Do you think this indicates that it's not potentially as serious as we thought? Gee, I actually I hadn't thought about that dimension to it. Um, I, I think it indicates tragically a terrible breakdown in a family. Um, when when cancer strikes families, regular families uh, drop everything, pitch in and, and support. Um, I guess when you've just written a book, you know, shit counting your father and his mm. relatives uh, so profoundly internationally and, and gone out of your way to do it, um, it, it, it's probably got a long way to go to make up. But uh, you, you may well be right. I hope you're right. I actually hope it's not as bad as it is. Mm. Um, the world doesn't need it. There were also reports, Danica, that Prince Harry didn't tell the royal family mm. that he was actually planning on flying in. No, I did hear that as well. So basically we've got a situation where what the king and queen, the king's just been diagnosed with cancer and the two of them are uh, what's supposed to just wait around while the petulant son makes his uh, unannounced visit. <laughs> Why would you travel all the way from the US to London to stay for 45 minutes? <laughs> If your father is ill with cancer, why wouldn't you want to extend that trip? Be with him. Help him through this. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. Do we expect anything less from Harry? No. Nothing surprises us when it comes to Harry. Mm. Let's be honest. I've got to give him the benefit of the doubt a bit here. I've got to give it to him. His father is, is, has got a horrible... They might have an appalling relationship, but I would think any person in a situation where you've just blown up your family would try to fix it with that news. 45 really... minutes, though. Why would you stay 45 it minutes? Probably had a net 
Netflix crew outside. Waiting to oh, probably. <laughs> waiting, waiting to film the next documentary, <laughs> the next TV interview. But, but if, you're, if you're King Charles, you couldn't trust anything that That's you said to Harry no, and not knowing problem. it's going to end up in a yeah. book.